hello, hello. Hey guys, welcome. Hope you're having a good day. Um, it's Omar here from Music Workflow Academy. Um, basically, just wanted to talk to you guys, um, show you how I make a house track uh, in Ableton Live. Um, dropped my phone in the hot tub, so that's not working at the moment. Um, yeah, life's good. Christmas is eight days away. Happy Christmas to everyone, wherever you are around the world. Hope you're all having a great day and um, have a nice eight days lined up ahead of you. I uh, hope you have a great Christmas and a happy new year. Don't know how much I'm going to be uploading. Been very busy uh, with a lot of business stuff. Uh, Music Workflow Academy, obviously my business. Um, but yeah, we're just going to get into it. Let's uh, see if we can get some nice breaks down. If that doesn't work, we're going to go into some houseier stuff and build a track. That's quite cool. Um, people have been complaining a lot about me using audio. It doesn't really make a difference, but maybe we should use some MIDI uh, just for um, practicing. Maybe it'll make me better with using MIDI. So we're going to get out um, a, a drum kit. So I'm going to pick the 909 core kit. Um, and yeah, just going to create a new MIDI clip looks up here things looking a bit weird but that's okay um, so yeah hope you guys find this useful and um, maybe learn something from it so I'm just making a kick drum and then I'm gonna have a little rhythmic pattern here at the end so I just highlight this held shift and then move the arrows backwards and forwards and then come on D to duplicate. So I'm just going to highlight these, duplicate. I'm going to have more variation here. And then duplicate that. And then have some more variation here. Duplicate that. Have some more variation here. Maybe an empty kick here. And uh, one here, one here. Like that bit of variation and then something like this cool so we've got like some we've got a nicely very varied um, kick pattern sounds something like this kind of solid groovesy sounding not bad um, so yeah, I'm just going to label that kick. Just going to label that kick, and then make a new MIDI track, and then add a clap into here. And. Um, so put a clap in. That's a crash. Let's get a clap. And then yeah, duplicate this clap along. We're gonna have a, a bit of variation here. You can also adjust the velocity a bit just to add like humanized groove to the clap. So I'll make one clap quieter than the rest of them which will make the other claps stand out a bit more. So that's a nice variation there. Make a new MIDI track. Drag our 909 core kit on there. And now we're gonna add some, we could, we could add some, rides maybe for something different so you put them every third note like this so that sounds good we could also add some variation actually to that so So I'm just going to put one in here, there the velocity again, I'm 
that sounds quite cool and then here we could add some more variation cool so we've got a nice drum groove coming along here now we're going to add the percussion which is one of the more challenging aspects of making a drum groove kind of got to think on your feet a bit more so I'm just going to decide what percussive elements I want to add to my groove could add a snare roll that's lovely okay so I might just add like a snare roll something like this um, can add some variation of course so I like this um, again just gonna add some more variation nothing too crazy and and maybe change the velocity of this hit Oh, I forgot to save guys, so sorry about that. I hate it when this pops up, it's really annoying. Um, but yeah, I just press Command S. So I'm just gonna save this as um, YouTube Tutorial. Okay, cool. Uh, sorry, got a bit carried away there, so I kind of rolled off the tongue a bit. Um, so we're gonna continue, get back in the Head right headspace, we're going to continue with some snare rolls here. Um, so, some more variation. Just add in some snare, snare rolls like this. And then again, change the velocity of these notes. And uh, we're going to put one here. And then a little one here, but really quiet. And then maybe this one a bit quieter as well. So it's building quite nicely and then here we're just going to have uh, a big rolling snare roll something like this where I'm just playing with the velocities and um, that's lovely and yeah we're just playing around making drum sounds creating a nice rhythm and a nice groove super important and we can actually build on this. I don't mind building on this for a bit longer. Um, so we could actually duplicate this along. Um, consolidate this. Actually, I'm going to not consolidate that. Just highlight everything. Press Command J. I'm actually going to duplicate this one along. Add some more snare rolls in. Um, just so it's gradually building, basically. Uh, sounds pretty cool. I think with the snares coming in and out. Kind of Plastic Man, Richie Horton inspired, um, Spastic uh, by Plastic Man, 1996 I think, on his own label, um, that's the year I was born, 1996, so more snare rolls, and then we're going to build it some more with another one in here, and they're just going to kind of roll off each other guys. And maybe another one in here and they're just kind of bouncing off each other guys sounds really cool sounds really fun I'm just gonna fill the gaps in a bit and maybe change some velocities that didn't sound so yeah another thing is ear fatigue guys so make sure your ears are, are nicely rested. It's always hard to come after a day of work and just get in straight in the studio. Um, so I recommend just having a nice rest, maybe a nap after work. That sounds good. So we've got like this 17 bar progressive snare roll. Doesn't sound too bad. Um, sounds all right 
Um, so we're just going to consolidate this. I'm going to call this snare. I know it's supposed to be a percussive loop, but the snare the snare all sounds interesting enough. So now we're going to go for like a deep house bass line and see what we can get. I'm going to be honest, that sounds really cool. So, yeah, so we've got the waveform basses. I've been talking about these guys. They're really good. Um, super cool bass lines. Um, you find them in instruments and then wavetable and then bass. So we've got slider deep bass here. Really good. I'm just going to add that to my collections by right clicking. And then I'm going to put blue, which is use. Just so I know. So now we're going to write a bass line, guys. Um, so we've got our instrument down here. We're just going to double left click, create a new MIDI track. And just start drawing some bass notes. Um, maybe change the frequencies a bit. Um, and then we're going to take it down 12 semitones or 24. Maybe more, just to take it down a few octaves. Okay, so you're going to take it down 24 semitones. And I'm going to reduce the voices to, oh, it can only go to two. So yeah, less voices. Unison. That's quite cool. Sounds quite a bit too poppy for me. We can take it down an octave here. Let's hear it with the kick drum. Um, I should probably get a keyboard to draw some notes in. We're just going to draw some notes in here. I think we're going to have it in A minor. And just draw some notes in. Something like this. So it sounds very, 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 very bad at the moment. We're just going to put an arpeggiator on there. That's really going to spice up our bass line. So this is where a lot of you guys get stuck writing bass lines. Um, you know, you, you get a sample or a preset and you just like this bass line sounds awful. Sounds like, oh, there's a few quick and clever and easy ways you can spice up your bass lines a bit and just make them a bit more interesting a bit more easy to listen to so if my first tip is the arpeggiator where we're going to be looking at arpeggiating our bass line so we've got our rate gate steps we're just going to change that this rate change our rate and we've got gate which is a hundred percent and then steps and then the distance is how far we're going to go with moving the uh, note of the bass line so that's really interesting and when you get a nice amount of distance uh, keeping it in key of course you get a cool, groovy, uh, rhythmic bass line that is musically pleasing. So that's quite cool. And of course we can tweak our bass line a bit more with this wavetable preset. bit nicer. Sounds like there's some white noise running through this bass line. I'm not really a huge fan of that. 
So I'm actually going to change that to a saw wave, or I could change to a sub. And this is essentially the pitch. Which is really interesting. Uh, so we've got all sorts of stuff going on here. We're going to look at the envelopes again. Uh, we've got some LFOs here. cool effect there playing with the LFO that's a fun little moment <laughs> We can find a sweet spot with this LFO, that'd be really cool. Well, I don't know what I've just done there, but it sounds really good. Polly just wigged it out a little bit there. And in the MPE, we're just adjusting like automations within each kind of parameter so you can get some interesting results here. Of randomizing. Super cool. give you guys a playthrough of this track at the end with good audio and you'll be able to hear the track fully so don't worry too much about that this is a really nice bass line so yeah basically I'm just gonna get the bare bones of this track and then that's essentially the arrangement um, for now and um, We'll be back in part two. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll speak to you guys. I don't know what. Should we just do the arrangement now?
I like it. I like it like this. I'm going to give it a master and then um, I'll upload the full track as well. Thanks, you guys, for listening, and I will give you the real audio now. Speak to you in the next one, and don't forget to like and subscribe.